Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of El Koki Otaku. Today with us, we have a very special guest. She voices Irene Shima in Laid Back Camp, also Sayo Shino Yama in Dead Mount Death Play. Um, all, uh, she also voices Sakura Kono in Horimiya, and Halford in Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Honestly, the list keeps on going. We're going to talk a lot. <laughs> about a lot of characters today. So please give it up for Seth Paris. I'm going to with that list. <laughs> I forgot to include myself in the spotlight, but that's okay. That's fine. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of titles in there too. Like, even I know, I know. Hey. I always say, I always say, um, anime titles are getting to be essays now. Um, next stop is novels. Okay. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly. And then it starts. Then we go from there. Right. And I, I suffer every time because probably that introduction that you saw from Kiara, that editing, those ten seconds, it takes me like one hour to edit. So everything is they. She say another one, another one. We're like. Five minutes, like 10, five. 15, 20 minutes, 35 minutes. Oh, God. <laughs> but anyway, Celeste, <laughs> thank you so much for granting us this opportunity to talk, chat with you today, tonight, whatever the time you're watching this episode. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I, I, I really appreciate uh, uh, being asked to come on this. And uh, you brought a lot of my buddies on. And so it's a big honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Definitely, it's an honor to chat with you guys. Especially, it's, I always say it's so interesting. It's not the same what uh, talking about an anime studio or a character from somebody who's watch it from the actor point. That we're always like, whoa, did you see that uh, that point of view? And talking about point of view, let's start with one of the latest uh, anime role that you had with Tayo Shinoyama in Dead yeah. Mall Death. <laughs> yeah, Sayo was something that like I never it just vocally had never done before because usually like if you look at the rest of my characters, they're all like very soft spoken, but they're a lot of them are also like on the on the higher range. Whereas Sayo is just straight up like down here, just this in her vocal fry, like lowest range and just like emitting the lowest energy possible. And like I, I have no idea what Jason, <laughs> who or director Jason Lord, uh, uh, saw <laughs> in me that like made him think I'm gonna cast Celeste, who usually voices like soft princess characters. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put her in that role. So, but I love Ryo. Prob- she's she's fun. <laughs> he probably was like, okay, let's. Let's test her out for a different range now and see how she does. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, and it was so much fun. We had so much fun in the booth. Like, that character is just so feral and just, just like, mm. we just kind of wish that uh, the show, like, had a had a season two that was just, like, or another, like, an, uh, another season that was just, like, entirely about her. Because <laughs> she's just, like... Like, what does she do with her day? Like, does she she just, like, hangs out and her shark's looking back. Exactly. She just Yeah, yeah. Just thinks about sharks all the time. So, I always loved, like, I loved recording for that character. She was just so much fun. And uh, I, I just loved getting to see, like, what she was going to say this, this week, you know. How would you describe the series, though, for those who haven't watched it? Because it gets... Yeah dark <laughs> it's it's very dark but it's also i mean it's like a dark action comedy <laughs> like it's, yes. it's 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 that's how i would yeah dark comedy with action Some edgy in there for yeah sure. yeah for sure <laughs> which for for me was like like the beauty in the darkness because we're talking about uh necromancy yeah, Necromancer, the main character. Mm-hmm. Uh, Literally yeah, yeah. uh, handle Necromancer, skeleton, dead body, skeleton. Uh, but this time, we're looking for a right size, somebody who's trying to find peace in a new world, which is a reverse Isekai. He came yeah. from the magic world to the human world. I mean, reverse Isekai because this world feels like it's more magic, more drama in the real world than his own land world. So, and it, it is. It is a very interesting series. I 
I never thought I was going to expect so many emotional scenes in this series, especially yeah. about Necromancer. Yeah. And Sayo surprised me, to be honest, because when I see her in your resume, in your lineup of character, I was like, how she made it here? Because we see a trend on your character, but suddenly we see Sayo, that you mentioned, very low character. So, do you feel any challenge changing from a happy character to a no emotion show in the voice but show in action because she has killed us a lot of your emotion in actions um you know like it it actually found uh, or it actually came very naturally <laughs> like i she's just so um contained in just like a small it, it felt like she was just contained in a small box and like only so much could get again uh, sent through um and and vocally i mean it was just it was easy to go because even though it is low and it it is it it does seem like it isn't it doesn't have a super expansive range um there's still like so much room to play with like texture within within how she expresses everything and so i don't know i had a really great time just as a, from an actor's perspective playing with with how to express things through this character um especially like like in season two uh when she's given the shark um uh slippers and she just like has this moment where she's like blah, 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 blah. like that was just that's how she expresses excitement and joy and that was yeah very fun to explore Do you share the same excitement for Shark as she does? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I you do don't? actually have a massive uh, shark costume, and so I'm not nearly as into sharks as she is. Obviously, I don't. I don't think anybody really uh, can compete with her for that. Uh, oh, but I, yeah, I, I like. I, I don't like gotta. Well, shark. <laughs> isn't that isn't yeah. it? Is it the shark costume that that appears Darkita. like the Katy Perry? Uh, Sharkira? Uh, oh my! No, well, it's the same one. Sharkira and Katy Perry, <laughs> <laughs> and the Katy Perry like Super Bowl halftime show. No, it, I, no. I love that shark, but it, this one's like kind of. This one's more like a Jaws costume, and it's got a little screen for my face. I just found okay. it in a thrift store, and like I, I love working it out every now and then. Maybe someday I'll. Do a little Sayo cosplay <laughs> Damn. By the way, yeah, guy, Kiara, super fan of Sharkira. Uh, Sharkira video. Sharkira. So. Oh, really? It's a, it's a really old meme video. Um, oh my gosh, the um, it was like dancing with her. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was, oh. it was a parody video. Um, somebody had done about the. Oh my god, I can't forget the, I forget the name of the song. Anyway, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Uh, but it was like a 2008 uh, my hip, hips and lie hips low lie and then they just took it and instead of saying Shakira they just said Sharkira it was like a 2008 <laughs> video it's so old it's so old I love when YouTube it. was YouTube <laughs> I mean, not the YouTube of today's day when YouTube was something way different yeah 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 But moving to a that. different moving to a different spectrum Let's go to color, happiness, sweetness, and sugar with your main role of Anne, Anne Halford. Halford. Anne yes, Halford. And she wears Apple Retail. Yes, yes. I love that show so much. It means so much to me. Um, I got to work with my good friend Sean Gann, who is our director on that, and the incredible Ivan Yasso playing Shao. It's just like the most, I had no idea what to expect when going into this show and it just like totally blew my mind how uh the emotional depth of it the, the just beautiful moments the artwork is incredible um yeah i love this show so much and i'm so excited to see that it's going to be on uh the crunchyroll tv i'm very excited about that. we actually just started watching this one um yeah we, mm -hmm. so we actually just started watching uh, sugar apple fairy tale um since Friday, I think, or since no. yesterday. I don't know. We're just like currently binge watching it. We haven't finished it yet, unfortunately, because I keep falling asleep as we when we watch it. It's so late and I'm tired. Oh, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. this is so beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> so uh, I'm done. <laughs> well, so the, the, But no, I, I, 
what I've seen so far, like I loved it. It just everything that you said, it's gorgeous. It's uh it, it gives you like a sense of, of wholesomeness at the same time. And then you're like, what's gonna happen next? What is she gonna do next? Yeah, gorgeous. I love it. And yeah, so do the other team. Into the season, We're still season one. But oh, it okay, happened to us. Yeah, season one, season one, mm -hmm. episode six, probably me. Because when we st when I started watching this series, my first impression was kind of girly. So like, huh, this is more girly. It's like, but yeah, I like it. So I'm like, eh, I'm probably not going to like it. So I just <laughs> sit down the couch, I keep watching it. And it's happening that I'm the one into it now. So every time I'm enjoying the episode, next episode about to start, I want to look here next to me. It's the totally silence. So I'm like, Kiara is sleeping. I like, can't freaking fall asleep. I need to go to yeah. next episode. She's like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, next episode. Damn it. So every night yeah. we're just fighting for the same. Why yeah. she fall asleep? And like, it really does like seem like it, it is like just a fairy tale. And like maybe maybe it's not your style. Maybe you, you like more, you know, of, of, of like uh, shonen Action. anime, you know. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah. But it's it gets really intense. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, and I mean, you can see that even just from, like, Shao, like, uh, defeating those bandits, you know, at first. It's like, oh, wow, he's deadly. Okay, where's this gonna go? What what are we gonna see with this character? And uh, have y'all, where are y'all at with our, our little friend Jonas? Um, he just got, he just got bitch slapped. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That was <laughs> that bad <band for. laughs> Because he stole her work. <laughs> was there ever a more satisfying that you've ever seen? <laughs> I was actually waiting on it. I was like, slap him, slap him, slap him. And Anish was saying, kick him or do something. I was like, slap him, do it. And then she was like, stand up. Bam. Like, she did it. She did it. <laughs> <laughs> And what I really like, when, I think it was Elliot, the master, sugar master. He like, oh. Uh -huh. I, I'm here like, that was a great one. To the H -O -O, that was a great one. And I'm like, my character, my man. Hey, yeah, I like this guy already. Yeah, yeah, hey. yeah. Jordan Dash crew is on Elliot, yeah. So, ha I feel like I have a, 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 a sweet spot for this kind of series because another series we're going to probably explore later. Ray, Ray Liana was another one that really tricked me, which I thought was going to be girly first episode. And oh my God, I was dying with that series three episodes later so and that's a big fan base of, of guys who yeah. love this type of series but we always how do you describe and how for I mean, this very sweet world sweet and yeah sweet. so it, she's got such an amazing uh character arc because she starts out the series and she's just like very young and she's very innocent she hasn't really seen much of the world But it starts with the death of her mother. And, you know, when you lose a parent, there's a there's a loss, a major loss of innocence uh, that, that comes from that. And, but she's so determined to, like, you know, make this dream come true and, and, and to honor her mother and this life that, that her mother um, uh, wanted for her, you know, to, to uh, be friends with fairies and to become a sugar artisan. And, uh, and she wants to honor her. And like every step of the way from there, uh, from then on, she's just um, learning so much about how harsh and cruel the world is, especially as a as a young woman. Um, and like she's in a male dominated industry, so we see her go from just this uh, very innocent, you know, young woman who doesn't have a whole lot of agency, you know, to this very like mature and and strong woman who um has confidence in her work and she uh yeah she has confidence in her, her work and she has just so much strength um and it, so it's it's a really beautiful journey definitely and the, it's kind of funny you mentioned about the, the no it's not a spoiler guy i mean we have spoilers so anyway but the, the, <laughs> the mom I sit down, I'm thinking, I'm thinking going to be a sweet, happy series, and the first three minutes, it started mentioning the, de the dead other mom, and I hear like, whoa, I wasn't ready so early for this, so he told me with the guard down here. 
You know, uh-huh. I must say something. In terms of that show, I was actually sleeping when Onyx put it on. And I start hearing it. I start listening to it. But I, I'm asleep on the couch. It's like, I don't know, like 2 in the morning or something like that when Onyx put it. And, <laughs> right, because he's a, he's a night owl. The point is, um, I'm hearing this and I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. Let me, let me, let me go watch it. So I wake up, I watch it, and then I'm just like, okay. Watching that first episode, I like it. Next episode, go. <laughs> Do I <put> it in? <laughs> yes, so it's yes. good. It's and good. I thank you so much. And the woman who plays uh, the actor who plays my mother is Anastasia Munoz. And Anastasia and I have known each other since. I mean, I was like fourteen when I met her, and she was, and I was like just getting into um, doing theater and and Shakespeare uh and she was my my teacher like over the summer when I would do like Shakespeare summer camps and stuff and so we have a we have a very strong bond uh so it just like made it all the more sad (laughs) that she was my mother and then she died (laughs) (laughs) I was like oh yeah yeah. texting her and being like oh you're my mom and and then I was like oh (laughs) I, I was getting ready to transition to long. the next one, but I was like, okay, let me do the transition. But so you say that, I was like, how will transition with them? My mom said, like, yeah, okay. Oh, I get it. Wait, I'm not get it. <laughs> no, definitely. And the cast, the cast in this series is so. I'm always impressed well, from a female male cast. How this guy always keep the voice so like, I mean, I, I, I don't go to try. But damn, when yeah. I hear this guy speak, talking, Ivan is a man of many. Like he's so talented. He's just got like such an incredible voice. And actually, um, <laughs> he might it, it might not be there when you get to it. But in season two, his real life wife had a baby. Like the the day before he was supposed to record, um, like episode two. So uh, they needed a voice match for him. And so somebody stepped in and and they did a great job. But it was very difficult for them to find someone who could do what Yvonne does uh, with his voice. Yeah, because he's he's just so talented. If I had the chance to talk to him, interview him, I will ask him, hey, how do you feel it to be a male Sunday character? (laughs) 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 But moving to something more relaxed, more chill. Talking about Rim Shima in laid back camp, which the beauty and the art, the peace of mind, the go to relax series. For those who haven't watched this beauty yet, how would you describe this series? It is the most relaxing show you will ever watch in your life. Ever, like, you should watch this before you go to sleep. If you've ever had, like, if you if you just have a hard day, um, then you should put it on. If you're uh, trying to make yourself a little hungry, you should put it on because it'll make you hungry. Um, yeah, it's just the most um, wholesome, like, uh, relaxing show that, that you could possibly watch. It's it's so delicious. It's about a girl. Uh, it's about a, a, couple, a few girls uh, that are all, like, besties. And my character is Reen Shima, and, or Shima Reen, as everyone likes to call her. And she is kind of a, she's an introvert. Uh, she's kind of a loner. And so she goes camping, like, all the time by herself. She rides her bike, and then she upgrades to a scooter. So she likes to go camping around Mount Fuji. And um, uh, then she meets Nadashiko. Uh, who's going to be her best friend who's very loud and wild and crazy and then uh, Nadashiko discovers a love of camping so it's about girls young girls who just love uh, uh, cooking and camping and being outside together which I love I, I, I always describe this uh, this um, series as Animal Crossing on TV because <laughs> the, the song the, the uh, I'm sorry not yeah. the song the uh, yeah the songs uh, yeah, the background music. The yeah. Soundtrack. The soundtrack. The soundtrack. Yeah, that's what I was trying to look for. The soundtrack is actually like I'll listen to it. I'm like I'm playing Animal Crossing right now because it's 
it yeah. sounds the same to me or in the same vein at least it's so similar and in terms of what they show they are so faithful to the campsites because i um, i don't know if, if any if you've noticed or anybody's noticed that at the end of the credits or while the, like the credit the end credits are showing there's actually a um, website that's listed and it's the same website well they they use the same website in when they're looking for campsites and i go to that website and i can't necessarily find it but i find the one that's super similar to it that because i guess the geolocation so i i end up i end up actually finding it and it is a website for campsites specifically and when oh if you God. don't find it like if you don't find it just in, put in Google the name of the actual website, or sorry, not the website, the name of the actual camp they're going to that day, and then go to Google Maps, and you'll actually see shot for shot the pictures of people, the pictures people have taken, and what they drew for the anime. It's the exact same thing. Wow. Down to like, look, there's the statues, the statues, look, there's the, um, the cabin, same color, <laughs> same everything. It's amazing. Wow, that's amazing! Holy, I had no idea. Yeah, it's the I same. No, no. That's so they so literally. Cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing that. They literally have gone to all these actual campsites, like real life campsites. They have taken their pictures and they have redrawn them for the anime. And again, it's down to the color. They've got it right. And I was wow. just amazed when I was look, going to like Google Maps. And you know, sometimes in Google Maps, you can see like street view. Uh, so you're like, you're there and you're like going around and you're like, oh my gosh, all of this. It's in the anime. It's just gorgeous. That's and it just incredible. took me back to like, I don't know, someplace I've never been to. <laughs> wow. No, that's incredible. Wow. That is so cool. I'm going to have to start doing that from now on because that's that's very impressive. I love that. It's such a beautiful show and you learn so much about about Japan just from watching it. Um, I'm obviously not fluent in Japanese. Like I've picked up a little bit uh, since since working uh, in the dubbing world, but uh, it's definitely presented a challenge at times uh, because, you know, like you want to <laughs> you want to do a service to to the material um and there are so many uh names of like statues and bridges and lakes and rivers that like are not words that you, you you're taught when you're learning on duolingo you know <laughs> like, oh yeah true i'm like i'm gonna teach you that word you know and so it, like the pronunciation aspect of of of, of the show is very challenging at times just because some of the some of the names of things are very niche um, instead of, uh, you know, like saying someone's name, which is a lot easier than, uh, yeah, getting getting a, a list of like landmarks, you know, going. Another thing that this anime um, reminded me of, because they go, I'm saying they go so faithful in every, in every single location that they go to, they're so faithful. There is a uh, another series on Netflix that's called uh, Termi Romai, Thermi Romai, however you say, because it's T H E R M A E, and then Roma, but R O M A, oh, and then an E. So it's actually a series based on um, okay, the hot springs. The hot springs. <gasps> um, it's this guy who he, he's a Greek engineer. And, or architect, I should say, and he builds these um, ba uh, hot baths or public baths. And then, what happens is he will, when he goes into the bath, if he goes too deep, he emerges in different time at different times in Japan, either the Edo no. period or modern day or with things like that. The point is, at the end of the of the actual episode, they go to a to real life shots of the author and how she is going 
to the actual uh, Japanese onsens to show you, hey, this is what this episode was inspired on. And like, they'll draw the exact same thing and they'll give you a brief history. So the let's say the anime episode is like 25 minutes long, like every other anime episode. So this one is about 15 minutes of actual anime and then the last 10 is going through going through the different real life locations of these places and this is what Layback Camp reminded me of when I saw it's actually based on the real life locations. Wow. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I have to check that out. Yeah, I mean, like, if you watch this watch this show, you're gonna want to go visit Japan. You're gonna want to go visit Japan and and go visit the smaller villages and and spend time in the hot springs. You're gonna want to see these these locations that are presented very accurately. Uh, uh, it's a it's it's a bit of like a, a how to visit Japan kind of show in a way, you know. And the how to cook, uh, like campfire yes. cooking and things like that. Because they yeah, will literally like, give you the instructions on what to do. Yeah, yeah. Somebody on Twitter actually was uh, in season one. They were they were uh, making a lot of the the dishes that Reen uh, cooks, and they would like share little photos with me, and I, I loved seeing that. But yeah, you like you pick up some skills about camping and cooking uh, from it. It's it's such a great show. I'm so excited to be. I'm in the middle of recording season two right now, and. Uh, there's there's word about uh, about uh, a studio releasing season three in uh, in April, and so we'll see we'll see if if we get to do that. That would be really awesome. And like I can tell already, the cast is super fun. Not only Celeste yes. there, the cast of people. Hannah who was the there. <laughs> yes, yes, Hannah's awesome, and and Molly and and, and Caitlin and. Uh, Morgan, who plays Natashiko, uh, is also uh, our AD. And Morgan also voices all of the inanimate objects. So she's also the voice of my scooter, of the pine cones, of the squirrels, of like every <laughs> little critter, except for except for Chikawa. She's not the voice of Chikawa, um, but she she does all of the the, the like. I see. Just, <laughs> just interesting. Before we move on, how do you describe? Um, oh, I forgot you gotta say, Rin, uh, Rin Shima. How, how do you describe Rin Shima? Rin is a bit of a loner. She's uh, introverted and loves being out in nature. She loves camping. Um, yeah, but she's she's adventurous uh, at the same time, and um, she's got a big heart, but maybe she doesn't want to show it. You know, she she's right. she's very reserved and. And yeah, she's she's the best. What question? Have you ever gone camping? Like, yes, like I kids? grew up camping. Yeah, yeah, I grew up camping. Uh, my family would always take me on, on camping trips. Like every summer, uh, we'd go on a big camping trip. It's been a while. It's been a few years, but um, yeah, I love I love camping. Love spending time. Um, my family would go to Oklahoma a lot. There are a lot of really great camping spots over there, and. Uh, swim in the natural springs and yeah because the one time I went camping with my sister <laughs> we we slept on a an air mattress and oh, yeah. I had overfilled mine and I slept so instead of me sleeping like this I slept like this this was oh, my no. <laughs> this is my friend like, this is my head <laughs> this is my feet and this is my belly <laughs> And I could not for the life of me stand it. <laughs> and then I see like Pat Camp and I'm like, that's so romanticized and that's so pretty. And then I just think back to my own experience and I'm like, I was suffering <laughs> through all of this. Granted, it's peaceful as heck. They do get that right. But in terms of sleeping, I look at them and they're like, they're so cozy. And here I am just... <laughs> suffering <laughs> that was my own experience yeah, some camping trips have been more soothing than others there was one where um because i love like there was one time where we went camping and there was like a light morning rain and it was just like super we like made some little uh um oh, fire you know coffee like over the fire and and that was really great but then there was another time where my family i was really young 
And we were camping by this river and it started pouring down rain and this river started flooding. And like, I was a child. I was like probably eight years old or something. And uh, my older sister, my parents like instructed my older sister, like get in the car, race yeah. to Celeste, like distract her while they were like, like running around, like putting everything away, tearing down our tent before this river flooded. And we just like sped away. <laughs> and it was, mm -hmm. it was very stressful. But um, a lot of time, it's really lovely. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Apples in my time. neighbors. There wasn't a but, flooding, you know, river. <laughs> I feel like my two camping experience, real camping experience, one of them was on the rain. It felt more like a swimming class for the whole weekend. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, m moving from the camping area to the school side. So one of the characters, always remember, never forgot it, our food care that die in the friend zone talking about sakura in Hori horimilla yes. never forgotten sakura, you know. yes um, how do you describe uh, this fallen warrior <laughs> oh uh sakura is just the best friend that you could ask for she is loyal she is kind she is smart um she'll keep you in check Oh, uh, she'll bake you cookies. Uh, but she is, you know, she's also a shy person. She's also very reserved and, and, and she loves reading manga. You know, she's like, she's somebody who is um, just very studious and uh, very serious at school. Um, but she's, she's got such a sweet heart. And uh, yeah, we have that heartbreaking scene from, from Horemiya. Yeah. Uh, that just like rips rips your heart out because who hasn't you know been been uh rejected by somebody who like you know really likes you but just not in that way and you know uh having to confront that for like it seems like it's probably the first time for her that she has um uh told someone how she felt and they did not return the same feelings because they had feelings for someone else um and you know yeah and i think that part of what makes that scene so heartbreaking it's it's not just that she's going through that it's that she's being uh consoled and comforted by her friend i think that i think that like if if that weren't the also what was going on in the scene it wouldn't be so powerful but the fact that sengoku is is like telling her like that, that that guy sucks you know and then you know he's you know he should be kicked out of the school for being such an idiot you know because who would <laughs> want to be with you you know it's like that's part of what is just like so compelling about it is because it's it's such a it's a whole beautiful yeah. rather than her just suffering alone I uh, for my surprise I mean I'm a less of my life guy or with life love this kind of drama this, the fan base of Horimiya, of, of guys, is really huge. Very loved by guys and girls. But yeah. Guy who loves the series a lot. And I think we all suffer with this scene. Because, yeah, we see the main character. We know the main group. And we see Sakura's side. Knowing the main group, but very close to them. So we were, we knew where they was going. But even though, it was so hard to accept it. Like, they're like, why did you so, so unfair for her? The other girl didn't make the freaking move for seven episodes. Why <laughs> did you wait for the girl to make her move yeah. to say, oh, now I feel like, girl, you missed your chance. Get the hell out of here. You didn't choose to be there. You didn't make your move. Why now? <laughs> I mean, the world will be forever divided by people who wish that uh, Sakura ended up with them versus Yuki. Uh, we yeah. will forever be divided, but uh, no, it makes sense. I mean, like you know, you don't realize that like uh, that you have feelings for your for your best friend until like somebody who like is totally wonderful and sweet and loving, you know, like shows an interest, and then you're like, oh, oh, I don't, I don't like that, you know. So I get it, you know. We got it. We gotta understand. We gotta understand that. But uh, yeah, it's she's a Sakura is a must protect at all costs kind of character and you know we don't like see much like emotion from her uh in that way up until that moment and that's part of what just like 
breaks us as you know as we see it and that one that was Sakura was my first character that I ever played I never did like Walla before that like that was my first oh, wow. experience in the booth as a voice actor and um so it was a big that was a big <laughs> moment for someone who was really new I mean I'd been an actor since I was a child but like um that was a big moment for <laughs> for me in the booth um and of course Sean Gann actually who directed Sugar Apple Fairy Tale he was the assistant director on What a Mia and uh he was directing me that day and i've known sean for years so it was it was real i mean i've also known caitlin for a few years but um i i felt so comfortable with sean and um so it, it was a lot easier to to release that you know that moment but i was bawling in the studio <laughs> i was just like weeping like those were those were very real tears and uh <laughs> like he went well and i guess it was like something with timing went wrong and he was like do you think we could do that one more time? You got oh. one more in ya? And we did it. It was fine. <laughs> it was great. But yeah. Yeah. Which, Horimiya, the series, it's kind of special because even there's a slice of life from come on high school. I feel like the way they, they tell the story of each actress in the series, it makes it entertaining and not only one line. You're exploring all, almost everybody, uh, all the characters involved point of view at one moment in the series to make you mm. it make it easier to have more feeling for these characters and seeing this scene was something that I don't really think everybody was ready for it that still I'm still not ready to watch it again because so sad yeah. there's so much but <laughs> it, it was a great it is a great show it's a must watch it's relaxing comedy make you feel feel love again but yeah we all love love this series but Let's go now to your start. You mentioned that that uh, Sakura was your first character. So how do you and made your way to the anime voice acting? I mean, how do you make it to, to the acting world? What's your last um, journey? So-, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started as an actor when I was really young, just from doing like my parents couldn't afford to send me to daycare, so they sent me to uh, summer camps. You know, like, and uh, there was one that, uh, sorry, let me start that over. Yeah, they sent me to summer camps and um, that were, sorry, let me think about this. It's a long story. Okay. Okay. I'm starting over. <laughs> <laughs> so my parents- before, before you start, before you start, <laughs> okay. I love, love your earrings. They're so cool. Thank you. I got the <laughs> like, I keep looking at them. They're you know, they were made by, uh they're a local artist who makes them they're very light and made out of clay thank you oh, <laughs> love them honestly love them can i be looking at them it's like, time i want them <laughs> <laughs> i'll send you the seller i think she sit i think she she ships uh perfect out. but her stuff is great um but yeah so i started as an actor when i was really young Uh, My parents sent me to, like, little free summer camps. um, And one of them was an acting camp that uh, a friend of my mom's was teaching. And uh, that was when I was, like, five years old. And my parents could send me and my sister. So uh, they sent me through. And um, uh, after that, I mean, I I went to an arts magnet high school here in Dallas. I studied it in, in college. I did a lot of summer camps up until then. And um uh, but I so I'm I've always been from Dallas and like I guess when I was a kid I just like met all these all these people all these teachers like Anastasia Munoz she was my teacher at some point um in high school and so when I was done and when I came back home like I had all of these uh professionals that I'd looked up to as um as colleagues that and so I started working in the theater industry here and started working with um, Shakespeare Dallas, which is um, a Shakespeare festival here. And they um, uh, employ a lot of voice actors. Like it just happens that a lot of a lot of the people that work over at Crunchyroll um, also do a lot of Shakespeare. And so uh, through there, I just I don't know. I just started working with 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 people and making friends. And I got an email one day that was 
an invitation to audition for a show called Photomia. And that was like my, that was my second audition. I had auditioned for one other show like a year prior to that. Uh, but Photomia was like my second audition and I, I didn't have a, a microphone. I mean, I, I studied a little bit of voiceover in college, but um, I, maybe I had a USB mic and uh, I just went into my closet and was like, well, we'll see, you know, that probably won't happen, you know, um, and I got, I, I remember the moment that I got the email that I, that I booked Sakura and I screamed <laughs> and I alarmed my, my, my partner was very alarmed at the time. He's like, what's wrong? And I was like, I just booked a really crunchy roll or it was Funimation at the time. I was like I'm freaking out about it. And, um, yeah, it was, it was very exciting. The, so did you, uh, did you have to apply for this role or did they just contact you? They emailed me um, with an audition. And so I, I sent in an audition that had like a few lines from a few of the characters. I picked, I auditioned for Hori, I auditioned for Sakura, I auditioned for Remy, and I auditioned for Yuki as well. Um, yeah, I auditioned for all, all of the, all of the ladies. And um, yeah, that was the extent of it. And I just sent it in to Caitlin and it was all... <laughs> All, all, when all, I don't know. <laughs> it was great. From there. Yeah. This is, go ahead. The takeaway of this story, just do it. Cause just you're, do it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if yeah, you're going to do, do it. Theater. Theater. Yeah, just do it. Whenever people <laughs> ask me, like, I, I mean, like a lot of people have asked me, like, how to get in a day in a day. A lot of, like, theater actors. And I'm like, just keep doing theater. <laughs> you know, take classes meet the right people make friends like show people that that you're like show people what you've got you know and show your interest and from there like i don't know i feel like that's like the most you can do you know it's kind of like getting any other acting job you know the most you're you're more likely to book something if you know a casting director if you know a director if, if you're working and if people see that you know you're out there doing doing the work then you're more likely to to get opportunities Meet the right people for sure. Meet the right people, like, yeah. That's something that a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know if I should do it. Like, just just get out there. Just let them meet you. And if you're like, oh, I don't know what, how to go about it, well, just start searching and just look, just ask. Because people don't do yeah. that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And also, like, find people that you enjoy working with. Like, find people that are your friends that you have a lot of fun, like, Find people that you have a great time creating with. And from there, like, you can create your your own opportunities together. Like, it is all about who you know at times. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because there are so many people doing this that you can find people that you like, that you enjoy working with. And, and those people, you know, like, you will help each other out. Like, I get cast mostly by people that I am friends with, you know, and that's that's a good thing because... Like, I know I'm going to enjoy the experience working with these people, you know? Whereas, mm -hmm. like, if you don't know the person who's directing a project, and, and this is, like, for all areas of acting, by the way. This is not just for voice acting. But, like, you know, when you are working with somebody for the first time that you don't know, like, there's more anxiety about, like, okay, like, what's what's this person going to be like, you know, uh, in, the, in the rehearsal room or on set or in the studio? Versus, like, if I am cast by somebody that, like, I've known for years, I know that I'm going to do my best work with them because I know how they work, you know? And we can trust each other and we'll... And they know... They know that they, they hired... You know, like, they know what they're doing. But for those new talent, I mean, not only talent, for those younger that are jumping into workforce from college... Don't never hold yourself. Jump into something new, new area. It's yeah, easier. Yeah. You go with somebody that you familiarize. But yeah. the life take you to so for a new field, unknown that you don't know anybody. Take it because sometimes this experience, I will be honest, are hard as hell. But they polish you so well that later on, with that experience, when you go back to the people you know, you're technically a new person with the skills that they might need from you that they didn't they were not able to acquire 
until they have somebody who has to go through solid rock, have a hard time, yeah. and get the skills. Moving on to another wild world, to a apocalyptic scenario where music is the salvation. Talking about Tag Up Destiny, one of my favorite series um, where you're a cosplayer, a makeup cosplayer, this is your series to go to, and you have the main character of Heaven. How would you describe this? Let me start with, with the series for the love and watch uh, Tag Up Destiny first. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, like you were saying, it's it's got so much action and, and just a great story. It's it's very dark uh, at times, but also like, gosh, it's 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 just such a great show to watch. If, if you like action, if you love uh, just really well thought out characters. Um, it's very heartbreaking at times. I mean, it's 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 such a great show, and and Heaven is uh, a villain. She's um, uh, very like she's also soft spoken, but she's it's very calculated instead of like um, her being shy. It's just not like she only speaks, and that's kind of what's haunting about her is that she only speaks when she when she needs to and when when she needs to like let you know that you're in trouble <laughs> so that was that was a fun she was my first villain that i had played and uh the subtlety is really the key with her so. they aren't playing villain so cool yes i love playing a villain i always get cast as these really like sweet characters but i love playing a bad girl <laughs> and some background story it. about that me and come. <laughs> no definitely and some background point about tag of destiny here tag of destiny is inspired in a video game so one of the series i always had to speak on the my convention we had the panel uh anime inspired in video games even that Long story, we're not going to make it here. Why the game didn't make it on time. The enemy had to go first. Something like Game of Thrones. Something like that happened. And um, the character here, there's the artist. They really spend time on the makeup of this character. For, for example, Heaven is one of the most simple on costume. But makeup, which is kind of simple, is so well placed in this character that it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I always compare this character like the... I'm a big fan of Cirque du Soleil, especially not only the show. I love the makeup of those artists, the color, the color palette they use on the makeup. And Tag of Destiny, one of those series that you're a cosplayer or makeup artist, damn, you're going to love it because the most simple yeah. line, the right blue in the right place, it makes the change and make a character look like having go to smooth, badass villain. Yeah, yeah. I would love to see a cosplay of Heaven and Hell together. Like, if you if you and your buddy want to make a really awesome cosplay, y'all, please. I would love to see that because it, it's just, yeah, the character design is just so, it's so beautiful throughout the show. Thanks, Alan. That's awesome. Yes, please, 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 please. And moving to another weird Isekai, Isekai doesn't stop to surprising us. We sometimes we believe that, oh yeah, we, there's no more, there's nothing new for Isekai. We, our industry always show us how wrong we can be. They make up something new Isekai. One of the Isekai that you are in, and they just announced the second part, is Isekai in another world with my smartphone, which probably I screwed oh, up yeah. the name. Yeah, in another world, in another world, in another world, world you may which yeah. I mean, I feel like we say Kai today say we would love to say Kai with our smartphone and the internet and the <laughs> service connection. Yeah. For, so for those who haven't watched this interesting say Kai, how would you describe it? <laughs> so uh, it's about a a guy who gets uh, isekai into another world. He dies and he meets with God, and God is like. Uh, any, anything, what do you, what do you want? Anything. I'm so sorry. Like he, he's accidentally killed. He's like struck by lightning, I think. And, <laughs> and he's like, I'm so sorry. Like that only happens once every three weeks or something like that. He's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what can I do to make this better? And the guy's like, uh, not like what? And I, he's like, uh, can I have my cell phone? And <laughs> God is like, 
okay, yeah, sure. And <laughs> like gives him this phone and uh and he meets all these lovely ladies um along the way. And my character is Yumina Belfast. Um, I actually was not in season one. Uh, she was originally voiced by Felicia, the amazing Felicia Angel, um, who was just very busy. It has a lot going on and couldn't make it for uh, season two. So I stepped in uh, for the second season and we have uh, some similar qualities in our voice. So it was, but it was very interesting to learn how to match her voice um in voice acting sometimes like if someone is unwell if someone is out of town or something you know you might get pulled in to do a what's called a voice match which is where you are matching a person's voice and um uh that's that can be difficult some directors really want it to sound very similar some directors are like it's gonna sound different no matter what because you're a different person um, but can you like just emulate the right character and then we can, you know, we'll re-record it. It's happened all the time. It happened for one of my shows too. Um, but, uh, doing it for like taking over a, a character is, that was really difficult because even though Felicia and I do have some similar qualities in our voice, uh, I like, we are different people and I had to learn how to, you know, I wanted to pay homage to how she built this character. And so I didn't want it to sound different, you know, to how I would approach it. Um, and her work is so great. But I learned so much about... <laughs> I've never met Felicia, but I, I learned so much about her voice. Uh, just from watching uh, a lot of her work and, and just from listening, uh, like, a lot to how she says things. And it's like, I almost got to the point where I can, like, hear where she carries like certain I don't know like whenever I would get into the booth and I've, I've uh, done this a few times like I've done voice matching before for a few different people and for Felicia um, and it's like I can almost hear where she places like te- where she has tension versus like where she's letting the breath you know like where she's she has an amazing she has amazing breath control and that was something I really struggled with uh, was that her breath control is definitely better than mine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was was very challenging, but it was, yeah, good time. Do you, for ignorant people like me, do you also have to like match her pitch or, or like, I don't even know how to describe uh, it. Yeah, but honestly, like it we wasn't, it, that part's not too hard because our, our vocal range just like within pitch is, is pretty close. Um, I have had to match somebody who, like, I was just like, we do not have this. This this person is incredible and has resonance that I do not have. Uh, <laughs> um, but but with her, it, it comes a little bit easier, um, just because like our voices are similar enough to where it's it's easier to reach, it's easier. Okay. To- let me move to a, cra- to a little bit of craziness now. So mm-hmm. one of the situations was all craziness around. Uh, definitely not the best one to watch in front of your parents or family, uh, elders or family at home. Thinking about Tenpuru, no one can live <laughs> on loneliness. <laughs> Which... Oh, I forgot that one. I forgot that what that one was until you mentioned it. Or watch it to see how they react. And please comment yeah. down, in the, put in the comments how your pet react when yeah. they saw you, they saw what you were watching here. So, it is kind of silly because the, the series is not bad. It's not like we're watching no, here some TV, like out. So, yeah, no, it's, okay, great, it's, not no, it's very funny. It, it's not that. Yeah. It's not that, that. So, how do you describe <laughs> this exhibitionist series? But with a nice, beautiful message, which kind of doesn't yeah. make sense, but it does make sense. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it's a great show. It's really funny. Um, it, <laughs> it's, got some, it's got some sweet moments, uh, but it, it's mostly really hilarious um, and, and just absurd in the best way. 
Um, it is the only show that I have told my mom because my mom is very supportive um, and she she loves anime now. Um, she watches everything that I do. She loves anime. She's she's. I'll like mention a show that I uh, did a little wallet and she's and she's like, oh yeah, I'm all caught up. Yeah, I've seen all of that. And um, yeah, she's she's. Anyways. Uh, this is the only yeah, show that for... my mother is not allowed to watch. <laughs> like I, my mom, my little cousin who loved anime, I am. I told them you are not allowed to watch this show uh, because you are not allowed to watch this show. Um, that said, everybody else should watch it. It's really fun. My character is so chismosa. Like she is, she is just stirring the pot. Yes. Um, she she is stirring the pot. She is uh, just like the the puppeteer. What's it called? The you know that expression. Like she, La she like, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, the one that throw gasoline to the fire. Yes, exactly. That's her. Um, she's a mature woman, and she's. Yeah, she's very sultry. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. It's a fun show. It's it's about a guy who like has sworn off uh, romantic relationships, and so he's decided he's going to go be a monk. And when he walks in, uh, the monastery is now a uh, a nunnery, and <laughs> it's full of these beautiful women who are uh, uh, all nuns. And it, it goes from there. It goes from there. I, I can get over the background story is so fun. The main character that he's like, oh, I'm well known because my dad was a super mega player. Yeah. And it killed me that when he was a kid, he was proud of his dad. And he's like, <laughs> his dad abandoned him. And like, shit, get, I'm going to leave you alone by yourself because I'm going to make a lot of female friends. And he's like, oh my God. I'm so proud of you. And when he grew up, he's like, I'm so ashamed of my dad. I can't believe what he did. Yeah. And now this, this, uh, this, when he's moving to the monastery, he was doing some bankruptcy thing to his dad who make a move and plays it on bankruptcy. He's like, oh my God, kill me here. Yeah. So dramatic. But, uh, and by the way, Kagura Baldwin, she's the calm of the storm, which doesn't mean, mean she's the safe place the safer place in the storm it's the other way around yeah yeah so exactly. uh, i love the part where she lies something going on between uh uh Sugiyo and the main character like okay probably i might be safe or hopefully nobody recording this and when he looks to the left <laughs> that way we can get the camera like recording and we can hear like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is a wild series in defense of your mom and the girls here Usually, uh, edgy uh, series, edgy that show a lot, uh, they show, show more about girls' anatomy. In this series, they show a good amount of boys' anatomy. So yeah. it's, it was very fair, equal, uh, edgy series. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to watch it. I see nothing wrong if, with If I wasn't in it, <laughs> my mom could totally watch it. But because I'm in it and am in a few scenes that are very sexy... Um, she's not allowed to watch it. That's the only reason. If, if like, I, I have no qualms with my mother watching any any type of show, but um, if I'm in it, I want to... Boundaries. <laughs> there are some things this, this should not be. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's going to watch this show, this episode, and she's going to be like, okay, now I have to watch it. No. <laughs> it's the only one she can't watch. So it's let's try life. to let's try to save you from taking from this <laughs> tour to something more saint. Talk about the saint magic power is omnipotent. Where you have the character of I just had it here. Saint. I I was gonna confused because it's say saint. I'm like wait, I, I, I'm mixing something here. Say, Don't say. Yeah. How would you describe the character of Saint? Yeah. That was an excellent segue, by the way. Um, <laughs> Saint is... <laughs> He's 
specializing in that lately. That was that was excellent. That was top tier. Um, so the Saints Magic Power is also an isekai. And it's about a, a girl who, say, Takanashi, who I play, who um, one day, like after a long day at work, she steps into her apartment and she's magically transported to this world where uh, all of these men in coats have been uh, doing this, like, ritual to summon a saint. And they've actually summoned two accidentally. Um, and they believe that the other one that they summoned is actually the true saint that they they intended to summon, but say also magically got there somehow. Uh, and so they kind of, like, discard her, and she... Um, uh, learns about this world that uh where there's magic and alchemy and uh turns out that she is like a very powerful like alchemist and she's like got a lot of magic and all of this uh there are these like golden <laughs> all this golden light is is uh is like coming from her chest and they like all around and she's making all this magic and it turns out that she is the saint after all um it's a romance it's a beautiful romance uh with um just the most incredible cast like you should watch it for the cast alone um her uh suitor is played by the incredibly talented ian sinclair uh who plays brooke in one piece and uh he's uh space dandy uh He's very, very talented. And then uh, there are also, like, incredible, like, Monica Real is in it. Uh, so is David Matranga. Uh, they have a great relation, like, uh, teacher-student relationship. Uh, Ryan Colt Levy, uh, Chase on it, is in it. So is, wow. um, yeah, it's it's Start that. It. Who else is it? <laughs> uh, Nazee Tarshay um, is in it. Yeah. Uh, Great Murdoch is in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um and yeah, Natalie Rose is in it. I it's, it's just like the most stacked cast. And this is my second show that I did ever after Amorimia. And I was like still a baby and uh I was just like thrown into this cast and I was like, Who are all these people? I knew I knew people like I knew who Monica Rial was and like but I like looked up like who are all these other people and I was like am I the only nobody in this show <laughs> and, with a main uh, character <laughs> as the main character like I'm just surrounded by these like extremely talented like seasoned actors who are like who like all of them if they hadn't already popped off by the time that we did the show they were about to because like very soon after we did this like that was when Chainsaw Man happened and yeah <laughs> so it's really it's a great show the cast is amazing and um it's a beautiful romance there's a lot of romance and action there's some very cool i get to fight a dragon at some point it's pretty cool so this one your mom is allowed to watch it oh my mom loves this show my mom <laughs> loves this show and uh, it will be funny to see once you finish watching the series on the Crunchyroll. Recommend the next next series to watch them put. Oh yeah, that that doesn't. Good. <laughs> <laughs> to wrap it up, and this was also directed by Caitlin Glass, the incredible Caitlin Glass, uh, who had directed Horemiya. She was also the director for this show. Did we so? And Emily Emmy Love was our AD as well. So wow. it was like swear... made by incredible people. <laughs> We're skirting around both of them because yeah. Yeah, every time we interview somebody, they're like, Caitlin Glass, Evan Lowe. And we're like, oh, okay, we're like around. <laughs> they're busy people. They are They are uh, yeah. you know, busy people who are always working on awesome stuff. Yeah. To wrap it up, one of the most chill series, talking about uh, your character of Runa in Beast Tamer. One of the series that caught me by surprise. Tamer? Is it the same word around? Yeah, okay. You said what Tamer is, is Tamer. Hammer. Tamer. For, <laughs> for do one thing I really enjoy, I will, it got me with my guard down and I watch a whole season in, in one non stop. So, how do you describe this series? Beast Tamer. 
Yeah, Beast Tamer is, um, it's a very, it's also got a lot of action, but it's it's very funny. It's a, to me like it's it's just such a funny show. Uh, even though there is a lot of like combat in it, um, to me it reads so much as a comedy because it's about it's about this guy who's like he's kind of he's kind of weak and he's thrown out of the, the hero's party, and uh, he, so he like goes to the Adventures Guild and uh, starts uh, uh, friendships with uh, all of these women that he finds uh, <laughs> in the like in the wild while he's like trying to fight monsters and um and he develops this team and i played runa who is um uh, a little fair she's a fairy and she has a, a twin um and when we meet runa she is being held captive uh by a monster and uh uh sora her her twin uh, who is played by my real life best friend, uh, Francine Gonzalez? Uh, she, they, they all rescue her, and she joins the party. And Runa is, Runa is a troublemaker. She's she's just a little. Um, she likes to she likes to play a joke. She likes to. She's a little saucy, you know. Um, and what's what's so fun about that is that like she's the opposite of her twin Sora. So Sora is just like this heavenly, like well mannered, kind, sweet, goody two shoes. And Runa is the polar opposite of that. So she's just like loud mouthed and um, yeah, very. She's very saucy. Saucy is the right word, I think, to describe her. Which is a great show, honestly. Like, I wasn't... The character that you mentioned was on... How do you call it? Despreciado character. Like, the, they don't value him. Oh. Yeah. Undervalued, underappreciated. Underappreciated. Let's put it that by the, the hero's party. And yeah. that's a beast ever. Technically, he... He make a contract with the most powerful beast that they're like waifus to... And uh, yeah. the case of Runa, they're like fairy. It's supposed to be a super rare, and it, it go at the end. We see we go what we want, kicking the main hero uh, group ass, which was great scene seeing this girl kicking them. So, uh, and how was the experience of uh, coming with your best friend being like this, the <laughs> sisters? But uh, that, that like low chance so to happen. Fun. Yeah, it was. I mean, how many chances do you get for that to happen? And what's funny was that, uh, like, right before the pandemic, Francine and I had been acting on stage together in a production of Pride and Prejudice, where she played Elizabeth Bennett and I was playing Jane Bennett. So we were already, like, we'd already played sisters before. And that was how we met. And we became instant best friends. And so when we were cast in this, and Francine is very much, like, a very sweet person. Like, she... She might not be the exact same as Sora. Like she's she's all like she's she can be a little saucy at times too. But for the most part, like Francine is like well behaved and like very she's very sweet um and kind and, and gentle. Um and so it was it was very fun like messing with her. Um uh, I loved getting to record after her because, you know, Francine would go in there and do like just like the most beautiful work. Uh, and then I feel like I was just like coming in there to like wreck shit, you know, and just like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Sorry. But, <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> but I loved getting to just kind of mess with her. I felt like I was just messing with Francine. And that was really, that was just so much fun. I love, I love it when I get to act with people that I know in real life um, and that are my friends. Um, like going back to Horemiya, like I am really, I'm friends with the actors who play Remy and Sengoku. And so like working with them is, is always a joy. But so, yeah, I loved, I loved getting to play Francine's sister again. At this point, I was over the pain of, of Sakura. You remind, you, bring, you brought back I'm the sorry. pain. <laughs> oh, Sakura. But anyway, thank Celeste, thank you so much for granting us this opportunity to talk to you today. For those, any words of advice for those who are considering joining the voice over career or acting career? Yeah, I would start out with 
like if you're starting from like you enjoy uh you enjoy watching anime or or whether you you know have gone to school for acting already i would say start with taking classes from people who have been working as voice actors you know for upwards of like 10 years start with start with amazing teachers start with like developing your craft um work in theater like theater and voiceover have taught me so much about each other like i have learned so much about acting on on stage from my experience in voiceover and vice versa like i i yeah highly recommend uh developing a comfortability working on stage um it'll teach you so much that you need to know and after that you know like find your community find find people that you want to work with because you will help each other thrive i would say start this and have patience it takes time every time the bigger patience yeah it takes a lot of time and like you know uh you never know like let's say you auditioned for something and you know you don't hear back in the first week and you know they've started recording it's easy to get discouraged from that but like you never know when you're going to get brought in i was brought in for a show like in like episode 10 of of one of the shows and it's like you know like that was like the second to last week of 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 them recording that show you never know and and she was a major character so you never know have patience be persistent have faith in yourself and find a community and have fun just have fun awesome Celeste thank you so much for the love and follow you again which social media can they follow you yeah you can find me on uh, Instagram you can find me on uh, Twitter X whatever it's called these days uh, yeah, yeah follow me on those yeah either one I'm, I'm always going to call it Twitter but yeah follow me on social media uh, Celeste Perez Uh, and if you ever do cosplay of my characters please tag me I would love to see them that's super cool please can do it it always scared me that the new Twitter X when I write X in the search bar like stay in X don't go farther don't take me get me in trouble (laughs) but anyway so if you're having trouble getting to the right Twitter or the address just go down to the description of this video expand the description and you're going to find Celeste web uh, links over there down the description to her Instagram all the social media she mentioned Twitter X Twitter and because you already made it over there go to the left so hit the like button please to find the YouTube algorithms and please go to the right to the subscribe button which is a big help for us and we also only ask uh, re- we can ask you to join to follow us in all, all our social media whether we have Facebook Twitter Instagram YouTube please YouTube, uh, Twitch, uh, all social media that we have uh, available, El Coqui Otaku, you can go to Google, right, El Coqui Otaku, something new, we have now a, a side podcast, if you're a fan of Formula One, you want to learn what the hell is Formula One, if it's about gasoline, or it's just about people driving crazy in, in circles, more than that, you can also find El Coqui F1, which is down to the Christian 2, uh, over there going to learn about what the heck is a Formula 1 uh, interesting fact and now every week uh, we're having live uh, reacting to all the news like all the gossip going on that you didn't see behind the scene so here you go guys so, and follow follow everybody in the social media and Celeste thank you so much for- thank you thank you so much for having me I really enjoyed spending my Sunday talking to you all about about end. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Sayonara. Bye.